The Fanny Bryce Show, with radio's newest personality, Danny Thomas as Jerry Dingle, the postman, Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks. ourselves in Sycamore Terrace. It's a bright, sunshiny day, and down the street, his footsteps jaunty and slightly pigeon-toed. As he carries the morning mail, comes that gay young man in gray, Danny Thomas, in the role of Jerry Dingle, that daydreaming postman. Hello, Mr. Tremble. Hey, how come you're closing the drugstore so early in the day? Haven't you heard? They're having a real live show on the stage at the Bijou. <laughs> Oh, sure. I'm going too, Mr. Tremble. I hear they have a great comedian over there. Yeah, I know. Hey, Happy, uh... <laughs> Aren't you afraid you'll have a good time? No danger. I brought along a sleeping pill. Huh. Well, so long, Jerry. So long. Have a nice nap. Good morning, Jerry. Oh, hello, Mr. Higgins. Hey, how's Snooksy? I'm going home together now. Huh? We're going to the Bijou Theater. They have a big show there today. Several acts of vote, though, including the Quiz King. Yeah, I know. You know, I met one of those quiz fellows once, and I almost won $5. Oh? But he asked me a very tricky question. He, he said, Mr. Dingle, what great soldier is buried in Grant's tomb? And, and without any coaching from the audience, I said, George Washington. <laughs> Brilliant reply. Yeah, but I should have been coached from the audience. <laughs> But I was thinking if uh, you'd enjoy my company, I would go with you and Snooks to the Bijou. I'm sorry, Jerry. Uh, well, I'll uh, be happy to defray the expense of the tickets. Oh, delighted, Jerry, delighted. We'd love to go with you. Oh, well. Meet you in front of the Bijou at 2 o'clock. Okay. Well, there's the theater, Snooks. Can you see what's playing? I can almost see it. The last word is the king. Hmm. wonder what picture that could be. Can't you make out the rest of it? No, I can. Three, pa. What? Three, pa, king. Oh, free parking. That's only for people with cars. Oh, do we have to go back and get our car? Now, don't be silly. What does it say on the marquee? Throw, pickle, ma, pick. Throw, pick. Dick. That's tropical magic. <laughs> Don't they teach you how to read in that broken-down school of yours? No. Yes, they do. Then why can't I read? <laughs> you can if you try. Now, who's in the picture? Matt Daly. That's Matinee Daly. <laughs> Stop acting like an infant. When you're out with me, I want you to act like... like your mother would. All right. Lancelot, get your feet off the sofa. Lancelot, come dry the dishes. Lancelot, water oh, the lawn. That'll do, that'll do. Lancelot, spread my back. Snooks, that will be all. 
Very well, Lancelot. Look, you're altogether too frisky tonight. Yay, yeah, nice. Do you want a spanking or are you going to behave? Behave. All right. Let's look for Jerry Dingle. There he is, Daddy. Oh, here's a ticket, Mr. Higgins. Oh, good, Jerry. Let's go. Waiting for all seats. Oh, we ain't going to wait for no seats. Carmen Dragon's playing on the stage here, and he'll fix it up for us. And on the way back, I'll get some candy. How about it, Snooksy? What kind would you like? Any kind that makes noise. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know the kind you mean, Snooksy. The kind with cellophane. Yeah, that's the kind. Oh, uh, come on, Snooks. Uh, this way. Well, we're inside. My, it's crowded in here. Waiting yeah. for all seats. Uh, please don't stand in the aisle. Step behind the ropes, please. Oh, fine. Roped off like so many head of cattle. Just plain cattle. Oh, the indignity of it. I just don't know what to say. How about more? <laughs> Stop that. Look, Usher, don't you have two together? Uh, no, sir. I have one in back and one in front. What does he mean? He has a seat in back and a seat in front. He has? Yes. <laughs> You're disturbing the people. We'll just have to wait in the back until we get seats. Oh, I want to see the picture. You can't see it from back here. <laughs> I want to see the picture. Please, Snooks. I can't see it either. Well, you hold me up so I can see it. Oh, all right. Here, let me put you on my shoulder. <laughs> there. Mmm. Oh. Well, well, well. <laughs> You might let me in on it. What's happening on the screen? I don't know. You don't know? What are you looking at? The lobby, you're holding me the wrong way. Oh, excuse me. There. How's that? Can you see the screen now? Mm-hmm. There's a man and a lady, and they're having a big argument. Well, what's it about? It's about kissing. He wants to... But you don't want to. Just like a woman. <laughs> probably expects him to throw himself at her feet. Yeah, he just said he'd do it. <laughs> Daddy. Yes? What's so good about her feet? Never mind. Look at the picture. She still don't want to. Oh, now she wants to. <laughs> or he don't want to. <laughs> How long does this go on? I think the picture is almost over, Daddy. What makes you think that? They both wanna. <laughs> they both did it. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, the inevitable clinch. That's the end, all right. No, she's telling him to go away. Go away, Bruce. No tears. No farewell. I want to remember you just as you are. And he says, yes, I've got to go. I've got to go. All right, all right. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Cut it out, Snooks. I, I can hear him. I ain't talking about him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if we hurry, we won't miss the stage show. Yeah. Let's hurry, Daddy. <laughs> Just a minute there now, buddy. No one's allowed in the dressing room. Oh, I just want to see Carmen Dragon. Well, you can't see him now. He's just about to play a smile.
wonderful. Oh, gee, I listened so long to the music, I forgot I left Mr. Higgins and Snooks without seats. Outside in front. Hey, out of the way, Murgatroyd. Luke McGluck's coming on stage. Oh, gee. Oh, my name is uh, Dingle, uh, not Murgatroyd. <laughs> gee, Luke McGluck, the great vaudeville actor in person. Oh, oh hello, Mr. McGluck. Hiya, Jack. My name is uh, Dingle, not Jack. Uh, uh, I'm Jerry Dingle, Mr. McGluck. If it's not too much trouble, I'd like to have the honor to shake your hand, if you don't mind having the honor to shake mine. <laughs> no, never shake hands with strangers. Oh, Mr. McGluck, excuse my affirmary. Uh, I trust I've chosen the word wisely. <laughs> but uh, what do you do in uh, vaudeville? Do you have a train seal or are you a tightrope walker? Why, listen, you sycamore slicker. I don't like to talk about myself, but when I played Syracuse last week, the critics were unanimous in their opinion of me. Oh, this I'm sorry to hear. But uh, <laughs> do they love you in St. Joe, Mr. McGluck? Love me? Why don't I tell a joke the audience screams? You'll excuse me, Mr. McGluck, but you are a man who is very crazy, in my opinion, about yourself, in my opinion. <laughs> Look, Bob, don't talk that way about me. No one can stop me from expressing an opinion. Beat it or I'll call a cop. Except you. Beat it! Yeah, but... <laughs> Big shot actor. <laughs> hmm. Such is the result of good intentions upon my part. How do you like that he got sore? Big shot vaudeville actor. Who wants to be a vaudeville actor? Who wants pretty girls to body for autographs? Who wants girls that beg you to go to parties? Who wants girls? <laughs> I do. <laughs> when I tell a joke, the audience screams, he says to me. I should have said, I should have said they scream for help, I should have said. Listen, you sycamore slicker, he says to me. Uh, I, I should have said, under the Constitution, this is a direct insult, I should have said. <laughs> Sure, I, I should have said it because I know the Constitution backwards. I do. America of states united, therefore, a Constitution is established for so end. And that's just part of it backwards. Calls himself an actor. And I could have been the greatest vaudeville actor in the world. I can see the sign now. Right in front of the theater. Pink's mules, Powers elephants, Thurman's cats and rats, and Jerry Dingle. Sure, why not? It's a free country. I'm a citizen. You can just see me now, backstage. Oh, Mr. Dingle, it's such a thrill interviewing you. I know how modest you are, but won't you please tell me something, something about yourself for my paper? Hmm? Well, very well, my dear, but make yourself comfortable first. <laughs> You're slipping off my lap. <laughs> Considerate, and you hardly know me. <laughs> now let's talk about you. About me, eh? Uh -huh. Well, I've always been unassuming. I've never been a ham. I shirk from acclaim and applause and fame, but as modest as I am, I admit I'm great. When I am on the stage, I really rate. There never was an act to match me. They yell, we want dingle, but they never catch me. <laughs> I reiterate, I have to modestly admit, I'm great. For years now, I packed the house in every town. My acrobatic stunts have brought me great renown. I do a double flip straight up, and then I don't come down. I admit, I'm great. We're in the theater now, and every single rafter rings as Dingle, the impersonator, walks out from the wings. Ladies and gentlemen, I shall now give my impersonation of Jimmy Durante giving his impersonation of Charles Boyer. Or, Charles Boyer giving his impersonation of Jimmy Durante. Or, take it from there, Jack. <laughs> the irony of it. Me, Charlie Boyer, cooped up here in this Casper joint. Toujours l'amour, or dive. What a dive. <laughs> that means I'm humiliated in French. Come, Charles, we must flee. The prefect of police is after us. Steady, Hetty. I'm not ready. <laughs> Pardonnez-moi, monsieur. I am Henri Jacques Pierre Louis Anton Jean Las Vogel. <laughs> the guy's in business for himself. <laughs> Everybody wants to get into the Casbah. But that is neither Pepsi nor Lamuco. What are you doing in my Casbah? I am the prefect of police. I have a ticket for you. You parked your camel in front of the Casbah. Come. Just a minute, Junior. 
You can't throw me in a Castile. I'll sue for information of character. Mansoor, I'll sue for misappropriation of alienation of affection. Garçon, I'll sue for habeas corpuscle. Hey, you mean you will sue for slander? No, let slander do his own suing. Yeah. <laughs> I got the law on my side. I quote from the Toledo statutes. The case of Chevrolet Coupe versus Coupe Chevrolet. Quote. Cum laura respiratum, cum laura mentalatum, six semper vix vapora at your neighborhood drugstore tonight. <laughs> Spelled sideways. <laughs> End of imitation. A hush comes on the audience and every nerve's a tingle. The next is a dramatic act portrayed by Jerry Dingle. The scene, the fashionable London apartment of the Sir Jeremiah Dingles. The occasion, the return of Sir Jeremiah Dingle after five years of hunting the wild herring bird in the jungles of Kansas. <laughs> Lady Dingle has opened the door. At the sight of her fair, lovely face, he loses his self-control and greets his wife fervently, passionately. Hello. <laughs> Jeremiah, you. Agatha, me. <laughs> We haven't seen each other for five years. True. Haven't seen you for three, you haven't seen me for two. <laughs> I trust I've added the numbers correctly. Jeremiah, you look rather strange. I didn't think you'd notice it, my dear. What happened? A tiger chewed off my head. <laughs> How awkward, Jeremiah. It would keep a stiff upper lip. I'm not at all depressed, dear. As a matter of fact, it's cured my sinus trouble. <laughs> Not a bowl. You're trying to kiss me. So sorry. I lost my head. <laughs> it's next to closing now, and the applause creates a clatter. Here come Dingle and Ryan. Happy songs and snappy patter. Hello, hello, hello. Who might have made you like a little show? No matter where we entertain, we always do our bit. We played an ice cream parlor. So much we even made a banana split. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Ah. Hey, uh, tell me, Dingle. Tell me, Dingle, why do you brush your teeth with gunpowder? Because I like to shoot off my mouth. <laughs> well, speaking of shooting off my mouth, I got a job in the circus. They shoot me out of a cannon. Oh, they shoot you out of a cannon? Yeah. Does it pay well? Two cents a mile and traveling again. Ah. <laughs> Wait for the joke, will you? <laughs> Speaking of two cents a mile, you know my uncle hasn't had a haircut in 40 years. Why? Is he eccentric? Wait a minute. <laughs> no, he's bald. <laughs> Speaking of bald, you know, I was up at the North Pole once and I didn't have anything to eat. I met an Eskimo and I said, hey, I'm starving. Have you got any blubber? Yeah? And what did the Eskimo say? He said, I got one blubber and two sisters. <laughs> And his sisters, <laughs> my brother just swallowed a can of gold paint. Yeah, how does he feel? Guilty. Oh, <laughs> oh goodbye, 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 goodbye,
back to Daddy and Snooks, who have finally gotten themselves seated. Daddy is settling himself to enjoy the stage show. Evidently, he isn't reckoning with Snooks. Daddy! Quiet, Snooks. The quiz show's about to start. There's Mr. Quiz King himself up on the stage. See, his assistants are going up and down the aisles. Are they looking for seats? No. They're going to ask the audience questions. If you answer them right, you get money. If you answer them wrong, you get candy. <laughs> Imagine that. If they ask me enough questions, I can get rich. <laughs> if they ask me enough questions, I can get sick. <laughs> well, we'll soon find out. Can you see all right? No, there's a hat in the way. Which hat? That big one on the lady's head. Well, don't point. I can see the lady's head. Tell her to remove it. Lady, will you please remove your head? Not her head. Remove her hat. All right. Oh! That child snatched my hat off. Snooks. Oh, uh, the child didn't mean any harm, madam. Here's your hat back. They shouldn't allow people like you in the theater. Hmm. <laughs> She's certainly got a bark to go with that face. <laughs> Looks like a Doberman pincher. A Doberman what? Pincher. All right. No! Oh, sure. oh, but you don't... Never mind. Oh. Here comes one of Mr. Quisking's assistants. Try to attract his attention. Yo ho, yo ho! Here we are! Not that way! He's coming towards us. I think he's going to choose me. Well, you seem to be a likely prospect, young lady. Darn it. I have a little girl. You have? What's her name? You're the little girl. Now pay attention to Mr. Quiz King. Mm -hmm. If you ever answered a question right, now's the time. What is your name, young lady? Snooks Higgins. Well, I have just the question for a little girl your age. Oh, make it an easy one. How much is two times two? We're dead. <laughs> two times two? Let me see. Oranges or potatoes? Well, let's say oranges. I can only do it with potatoes. <laughs> Good grief. Look. Give him the answer, Snooks. What are you waiting for? For goodness sake. Force yourself. What'd you say, Daddy? I told you three times four. Three times four? Twelve! I'm so sorry, but give that young lady a box of crunchy munchies. Next contestant, please. Well, you sure did a great job on that. Thank you. Have a crunchy munchie. Crunchy munchie. Come on. Where are we going, Daddy? Oh, well, maybe we can get another crack at this thing if we move to another part of the theater. Let's go. There's two seats down front. Oh, yeah, quick. Yeah. Look into them. Yeah, come on. Here he comes again. How do you do, sir? May I ask you a question? <laughs> Why, of course. I'd be delighted. <laughs> go right ahead. <laughs> Is this your daughter? Uh, oh, her. Unfortunately, yes. Good. <laughs> I have another young lady, Mr. Quisking. Your name, please. Don't give him your right name. Whose name should I give him, Alexander? Give him Aunt Sophie's name. Now, what is your name, please? Aunt Sophie. <laughs> and tell Aunt Sophie, here's a question you can answer. Who invented the cotton gin? Uncle Louie. <laughs> I'm talking about the cotton gin. Well, Mommy says he'll drink anything. <laughs> His first name is Eli, but I can't think of his last name. There'll be no coaching from the audience. He ain't the audience. He's my daddy. What's his last name? What's his last name? I can't answer that. Give that man a box of crunchy money. <laughs> Eli, 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 Eli. Eli, with me. I'm so sorry, but that was coaching. But give that child a box of candy. Next contestant, please. Come on, Snooks. Here we go again. Look, if by some fortunate coincidence he happens to come our way again, let me do the talking. You've been doing most of the talking. Don't be smart. Grab those two seats. All right. He hasn't chosen anyone from this section yet. Here he comes. Did I attract his attention? Yes. Ooh, you, didn't, you didn't have to trip him. Oh, uh, here, sir. Let me help you up, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, would you like to be a contestant? Well, I hadn't thought of it. Mm, that's my daddy. I have a man, Mr. Quiz King. All right, for 75 silver dollars. Oh, boy, this is my meat. What is osmosis? Uh... <laughs> 
uh, uh, osmosis. Uh, uh, hmm. Don't you know, Daddy? Certainly I know. Uh, osmosis is, uh, it's located in, um, he, he invented the, uh, it's when, uh, uh, Oh, you don't like crunchy munchy. <laughs> Sorry, but kill that man. Never mind, I got some. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. What an outrage, asking questions like that on a quiz show. Who'd know what osmosis is? I would. It's a process why by a more dense liquid tends to flow through a less dense liquid through a membrane. <laughs> I'm a bum again. Have a crunchy munchy, Daddy. <laughs>